So a lot of people have asked me, um, because I, I speak to a lot of my clients and, and friends and people who aren't on social media, a lot of people do ask me, you know, why do you want to check in? Why do you want everyone to know where you are? Why would you use something like Eclore? What, you know, why would you use Foursquare? And at first when I started using it, it was just a fun game. I mean, honestly, I was just competing against my friends to see how many points we could get. It was just a little thing that we were doing. Um, but as I got more and more involved and I started adding different people that I know from around the world, different people that I met at conferences, um, you know, even some clients, I started to realize that it was really neat to, to be able to see what people are doing and what's important to them and what they share. And so a lot of times, um, this is one of the things that are not immediately obvious unless you're using something. And so I think it's really kind of neat to add in this, this idea that you have thought bubbles. And if any of you have downloaded it, I was pretty impressed when I downloaded it and saw some of the thoughts just around my house. It's, each of these developments are so interesting, so it's definitely worth exploring. Okay, let's wait for the slides to come up. They're a little bit, bit blurred. So I'm Daniel Cowan, co-founder and CEO of Echoa, and uh, we, we beta tested in Montreal, so yeah, this, this is where our home is and where our heart is. Uh, and that started in February, and then we finally launched in the US and decided to go worldwide at the same time. Uh, about a month ago, not even three weeks ago, and we had a great opening weekend. Anyone who's looked at our blog saw that we got uh, 20,000 downloads in our first week, which not too shabby. <laughs> what I want to talk about is, to an extent, what we're doing, but also what's happening in the location-based space right now. Um, there's a conundrum we've been trying to solve, and I think a lot of people are trying to solve it. It's how you take this notion of real-time information flow and location and crowdsourcing relevance and put it all into one package. Uh, and this is probably going to turn into more of a seminar on how we behave and, and why this is so important to our regular behavior uh, as opposed to like an expose on Echo, because I'm not here just to do a product pitch. But what I want to talk about is what it is that we're doing right now uh, when we're sharing. So the Seesaw sharing slide is not up there right now, but I was going to point to that. But we're sharing the whole time. Uh, and there's a few things that are typifying our new behavior and that are prompting it to become more and more real time and more and more sharing orientated. Uh, and one of the main reasons is these, these amazing mobile devices that we have in our pockets. And like all of you are on Twitter right now, I'm guessing, tweeting away. Some of you will be quoting me, some of you will be looking at Echoa. Um, these devices and these iPads have changed everything. Uh, iPads are replacing laptops to some extent. Uh, mobiles have given us more power in our hands than we often have on our desktops. Um, fantastic, there we go. Um, and when you look at this, what you're seeing really is that these mobile devices that we can pull out of our pockets really easily and that are on the whole time allow us to share instantly. They allow us to behave as if we're not even reacting to real time, but creating real time. And what they do is they also allow us to, with two clicks of a button, go into an app, uh, see what other people are saying, and make our own contribution. And it's, it's no irony that we're speaking here at 140 conference and 140 characters. This is about doing it as quickly as you can, as seamlessly and as frictionlessly as you can, putting your thought out there for others to react with. So that's where our behavior is headed. Uh, it's about sharing in, in, in immediate real time on the go. It's not about sitting down at your desktop and doing it. So I just want to go to the next slide and talk about location for a moment. Uh, I've got this clicker now. There we go. Fantastic. I forgot I had it. Um, where do you guys look when you want to find out about places? Where do, you want, where do you look when you want to know how a music festival was or how a restaurant was? You normally go to a review site. Most of our go-to places now are still Yellow Pages or Yelp or Google Maps, and on there there'll be reviews. Or you'll go to a blogger's site who's talking about a music festival or who covered Coachella. And there's a problem with some of this, um, which is that when you go to those destinations, more often than not, it's not been adapted for your mobile environment. It's not been adapted for reading on your mobile environment, and it's certainly not been adapted for sharing on your mobile environment. When was the last time you went to a restaurant and thought, wow, the service here was terrible. I'm going to write about this on Yelp. Or you went to a holiday destination and you thought, wow, this hotel was awful. I'm going to write about this on TripAdvisor. Or that it was great, and you were going to write about it. And you have this great intention of going home. You get back to New York or Montreal or wherever it is, and you plan to sit down on your desktop computer and log into Yelp and write your whole review. And it doesn't happen because it's too frictionful. So, you know, that's, that's one of the main issues uh, that we're trying to conquer with the location space as well. One of the other issues is the whole notion of things being out of date. Um, by virtue of your behavior being, right, I'm going to sit down at a desktop computer and write a review, it's often happening a few weeks after the event. If it's a holiday, it's probably happening a week after the event. If it's a dinner, it's probably when you remember that you were going to write about something. Um, and when you go in there and look at the content, you're often looking at the content that was three, four, five, six months previous. 
Uh, it's often long and drawn out. It's three paragraphs or more on our average estimations, and it's highly repetitive. And sometimes, yes, people are voting up some comments and voting down others, and you get a sense of what's relevant from that. But at the end of the day, there's no instant way of you gauging visually what's happening in that space, um, what people have been saying about it, so you can consume that immediately, like you are with this. You, know, you compare this and the amount of information you can take in one go with what you're seeing on a review screen, and there's a, there's a vast difference. I also want to talk about the kind of people. Um, sorry if any of you are Yelp reviewers or TripAdvisor reviewers, but the kind of people that write reviews. Uh, they are the people that remember to go home and sit down. They are the people that want to write three or four paragraphs and that were so incensed by the experience or so elevated by the experience that they wanted to write about it. That's the minority. Most of us have thoughts in real time. That's the nature of human beings. And we want to air them to people around us or to people that might be in that same space in real time. So just thinking back to the last slide and what it was that typifies our behavior now, it was mobile, it was real time, it was minimum effort and maximum impact. And we're looking at what's happening in location, and it hasn't quite gelled with that. So you know, we're commenting on events in real time, but we're not commenting on what's happening in the here and now in real time. So I just want to shoot to the next slide. There we go. And not just big up Echoer, but also talk about some of the other stuff happening in this space and why I think it's so exciting. So everyone on this chart right here uh, represents a startup that I found interesting, and a startup that's trying to, trying to tackle this problem in some way. So if you look at Local Mind, they're doing something very interesting. They also hailed from Montreal originally um, as part of uh, one of the startup incubators, and now they're down in San Fran. Uh, and they're trying to create this notion of real-time Q&A. So you'll be somewhere and you want to ask someone a question who's been to that place recently. The only problem is they may not be there right now. If they are there right now, that's great. Uh, and that's where the whole crowd element comes in. The more people are using these platforms in real time, the more value you're going to get from it because you're going to have people likely in that place at that point in time. Uh, Glimpse is one of my favorites as well. You can literally send, the other person doesn't need to have the Glimpse app, you can literally send a glimpse of where you are and where you're going to someone and update them on your location in real time as you're on the move, whether it's running or you're on the way home from work. Vibe's a really interesting one. Um, Occupy Wall Street seems to have died into distant memory right now. Um, but last year in New York, Vibe was like a very hacky looking app. This is their old logo. And what Vibe let you do was air a thought um, normally like where, peop where people are going to be protesting, in real time, in a place. And then you could basically go into Vibe, set the radius, and find out what people were saying in that radius. But again, it wasn't really about commenting on events going on or commenting about what you thought of a place. It was about sharing, in this case, a political message or a, or a movement-type message that you wanted people to rally around. And it was about impromptu kind of rallying of people in a place. Mobley is trying to do uh, location and real time in the video space. Foursquare, you all know about. And this is one of the most interesting ones for me. So Foursquare does have uh, a lot of the things that um, we're trying to create and put into Echo. Uh, it has amazing content, great tips. But again, they suffer to an extent from this lack of real time and lack of interactivity within their tips platform because they started off as a checkout, or sorry, a check-in app. And I think it's going to take them at least till the end of the year to kind of shed that until they have you know, until they're at the point where they've got a critical mass of users who've come in post the redirection, um, who've kind of been educated in the fact that Foursquare is really an exploration app. But again, you're lacking that interactive environment. Trove is doing this for photos. Stamped and Oink, I'm going to put in the same bracket. And Oink in particular, if anyone's following the news, um, actually closed down a few months after launch. So they came out the gates with 100,000 downloads because of uh, Kevin Rose. Uh, and Oink was about getting super granular and not just commenting on a place, but commenting on a particular sushi roll available in a place. And it kind of went too far. And I think the problem there was, again, one of friction. Uh, you can take this real-time, real-place commenting notion a little bit too far sometimes. Um, we're used to being in places. We're not used to getting that granular. And if you want to get that granular, that's not the natural flow for us. The natural flow is to comment on somewhere and then comment on the thing in there, whereas they were jumping straight to the thing in there. Uh, and then there's us. Now, did you guys have time to put the... No, you didn't. OK, what I wanted to do, um, so for the folks who are at home, uh, I just want to show you some screenshots from Echo. I don't know if anyone can see this. It's a little bit far. Um, what we're trying to do is create these very interactive real-time spaces. The Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy right now, so I'm just going to show you some screenshots. But what you can do in Echo is literally open the app and see what it is that's trending or buzzing in your area at that point in time. And we're using a very sophisticated algorithm to work out what's most popular, what's been interacted with most recently, what's been amplified, what's been commented on, what people have clicked through. And we're taking all of this and tracking your behavior to work out what really should be shown up top. Um, if something appears up top, we're putting it on the map. 
so that you're seeing what it is at that point in time that's significant around you. And then you can go into any space. So if you go into the app, you can go into the 140 conference space, which we've skinned with the background. Um, and in that space, you can add your own thoughts. And we, we describe this in two ways. One is we call it a thoughtocracy, and the other is a living infographic. And it's a bit of both. The whole thoughtocracy thing comes from people putting their content and their thoughts in places for others to see and engage with instantly, literally with the press of a bubble. Um, or with the press of an ad sign, you can add your own. And then depending on how the crowd's reacting to that thought in that restaurant or on that stage at that music festival, they're going to move around. So the most significant ones, the ones that are getting the most credence and uh, I guess amps are moving to the top. And I don't want to I don't want to criticize Twitter for a minute because we use it avidly and we connect to it. But we've gone to retailers, and the reason they really like what we're doing is because if you make a really positive comment about a restaurant or an item there on Twitter, it's going to disappear down the feed within 24 hours, maybe even less. Whereas what we're doing is putting thoughts in places that can constantly be rege regenerated by that notion of crowdsourcing and by people amplifying that thought or engaging with it in a positive way. So if Java U is serving amazing coffee and everyone likes it, it's going to go to the top. And as long as they keep doing that and people keep interacting with it in that way and adding positive interactions to that thought, it's going to stay up top. So we're getting like a living, breathing reputation management system, which allows you to very quickly see what people around you are saying and you to contribute and interact and shape those thoughts. So I'd say watch this space, you know, uh, you speak to journalists and you say the word location and they start yawning now, uh, unless it's ambient location, like circle, glimpse, highlight, uh, glancy. Um, but I think there's still a lot to be unearthed and it's not, the debate isn't about location per se anymore. It's about what you're doing on top of that layer of location. And every one of these startups here is doing something very different on top of that notion of real time and on top of location. And I think the next year, um, no matter where it goes, is going to continue to be dominated by that. Thank you. Thank you so You're welcome. Cool.